Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love Online. This is Rashad singing and Lynette bringing a powerful word. I worship you in the spirit. I worship you in the truth. My love for you is genuine and pure. Your majesty is amazing, and that's what you are to me. And in your presence is where I want to be. I worship you in the spirit. I worship you in the truth, my love for you is genuine and pure. Your majesty is amazing, and that's what you are to me. And in your presence, it's where I want to be. Hallelujah, bless your name. Hallelujah, praise your name. Hallelujah, glorify your name. Hallelujah, glorify your name. Hallelujah, bless your name. Okay, Lynette. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. This came to me uh, from the Lord. I was given a dream, and he was showing me, and this is directed. Thank you, Lord. First and foremost, Father, I thank you and I praise you for using me. It's an honor and a privilege to be used by you. Let the words that come out of my mouth be yours and yours alone and not mine. I decrease so that you may increase in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, the Lord uh, gave me a dream about the body of Christ and about the things that are going on in the body of Christ that he is not uh, pleased with, he's angry about. And one of those th- one of the things he wants me to share is unforgiveness. And he wants me to uh, give the scripture and remind the body of Christ, those who are on the phone and those that will, that will hear this message beyond this um, meeting, that in Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 and 15, it says, For if ye forgive men their trespasses, hold on, for if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And the dream he gave me was um, a Christian young lady was um, in front of an enemy, and you know it was about forgiveness, and everybody had to forgive. And one of her enemies walked up to her, and she was like, I, I'm here for you to forgive me. And the girl, the, the Christian young lady said, I don't know about that. And she, like, kind of, like, pinched her or kind of stomped on her foot. And then she said, now I forgive you. And I was like, Lord, what does that mean? What is that supposed to mean? And he said, there's a lot of you who say that you forgive, but you have revenge in your heart. You know, you want to... Um, hurt them some kind of way, and God told me that's not forgiveness. Forgiveness is totally releasing that person. You wish nothing but the best for them. You love them, and you let all of that animosity and anger go. So that's what that first message was, that a lot of us Christians, we say we forgive with our mouth, but we're not forgiving from the heart. God says you have to forgive from your heart, you've got to release and let them go, not, well, let me slap you around a little bit first, you know, and uh, then, then, I can, then, then I can forgive you. He said, that's revenge. He said, didn't I say vengeance is mine? I will repay, says the Lord. Okay, so that was the first thing he showed me. Then the second thing he showed me 
in the spirit was a den of iniquity, and in this den of iniquity, there were Christians. People, some of these people I knew. I, I, I know who these people are. These are real people, and they were uh, in all manner of sexual sin, perversion, homosexuality, um, adultery, um, couples like men and women that were married were swapping with other people's husbands and. It was just a den of, den of iniquity and sexual perversion, and these people were Christians. And like I said, I recognized some of these people, and I asked the Lord, what is going on? He said, just just watch. So what happened was it was like it fast-forwarded. These people were uh, warned, and God sent his prophets, and he warned them about their sexual sin and their homosexuality and their perversion, and they were like, I don't want to hear that. You know, God understands I have needs or I can't control myself and this and that. And the other. He had all these excuses. Long story short, God said, and for this I am going to allow sexually tr- transmitted diseases that they've never seen the likes of consume them. And I saw these people literally losing their insides, their innards. Their, their, it, was, it was horrible. It was, it was just horrible. And... I saw one of them, uh, they weren't repenting. They were like like blasphemy, like like talking against God or like, you know, I don't know what, what kind of God would allow this to happen to me, not realizing that you're, you're saying that you're a Christian, but here you are, you know, doing these sexual things and you know what God's word says about that. And I'm going to read that, the Lord said, to also give the scripture for that. And he's very serious about it. This is... Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and it's verse 9 through 14. I wrote unto you an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world or with the covetous or extortioners or with idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother, that's where it's a church, be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such a one not to even eat. For what have I to do for what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within, but them that are without God judges therefore put away from amongst yourselves that wicked person. God calls that wickedness. And he wants the church to know that it will be dealt with. And there's also another scripture that says, turn someone over like that, over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. And that's where that disease and all of that came in. Because whatever this was that God allowed to come upon them, killed them. I mean, literally, it was horrible. But God allowed it for the destruction of their flesh so that their spirit would be saved. And I was like, Okay, this is very, very, very powerful. And the Lord was telling me that anything that's going on in the body of Christ, if you've got people that are in the pulpit or, you know, in ministry or whatever, ministering to other people or whatever whatever they're doing, they're they're claiming that they're the Lord they're in the Lord, but behind scenes they're fornicating, they're homosexual, they're they're doing all this perverted stuff. That stuff in infects the whole body of Christ and a lot of people don't realize that. So God wants us to know that this is very serious. It's not something you can just push over to the side and just be like, you know, oh, you know, I can continue doing this. God says he's very angry and judgment is going to fall upon those who practice such things. And the scripture, for those who want to see if this is true that God is saying it, the sexual sin, it is 1 Corinthians Chapter 5, verses 9 through 13, and then for unforgiveness, it's, uh, what is that? That is Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15. So those two things the Lord laid on my heart to share with the body of Christ. He is coming soon, and he's coming for a bride without spot, blemish, or any, any wrinkles or dirt or anything. He's coming for a bride, and not for someone who's, 
as Sister Pat said earlier, well, you take taking too long, is there something else? And see, that's where a lot of us, that's why that message ties into uh, Sister Pat's message. You know, we get tired. You know, a lot of us have been waiting on our mate. We don't have a mate. So, oh, okay, guys, you're taking too long, so i got to go out here and go get this man or go to the club or get on the web and look for somebody and all this other stuff. And a lot of reasons why people get and fall into sexual sin is because they are impatient and they are committing what God says is spiritual adultery. You don't love the Lord like you say you do because there's no way you can love God and say, well, my needs, I have needs, I, I, I feel a certain way and I got to, I gotta, you know, God says, you know what? That's what you're supposed to do, like Sister Pat said. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers us from them all. So when you're feeling overwhelmed with with uh, sexual needs and desires or some kind of, you know, something that's not right, ask God to take it from you. Ask him to help you, and he will. And that's all I, I was led to say to you, and that's it. Thank you for letting me speak. <laughs>